Today, we are talking to one of the co-founders of PodPros. That's the company behind PodMatch, which we'll talk about, Podcast SOP, which we'll talk a little bit about. I totally forgot about Pod Lottery, and one of the reasons he's here is he interviewed 1,600 podcasters and came up with a new service called PodScore. And today, Alex Sanfilippo is sharing 10 factors of podcasting success. Hit it, ladies. The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting since 2005, I am your award-winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, thanking you so much. And I mean that. I realize you could be listening, watching, reading a whole bunch of other stuff, and you've decided to give me your attention. I deeply appreciate it. This is where I help you plan, launch, grow, and if you want to, monetize your podcast. My website is schoolofpodcasting.com. Use the coupon code LISTENER when you sign up for either a monthly or yearly subscription. I have known Alex for a few years. I've appeared on his show, and all the links we talk about today you can find at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 895. Here's my conversation with Alex Sanfilippo from podpros.com. It's so weird that I, I thought I've had him on the show forever. He's a great guy. He is, I always say, at the heart of every good podcaster is the heart of a servant. And this is a guy that's all about serving his community. Uh, and today we're going to talk about podscore.io. And we might hint a little bit about podmatch.com. If it begins with the word pod, Alex has probably invented it. So, Alex, welcome to the show, buddy. Dave, thank you so much for having me. And right before we recorded, you mentioned, like, oh, have you been on the show before? I'm like, no, this is like a bucket list. You usually don't forget those. It's like <laughs> climbing Mount Everest is a bucket list. You're know, like, did I already do that? Right? That just doesn't <laughs> usually happen. But uh, Dave, I want to say thanks again like for, for what you do here. School podcasting is amazing. I wanted to say I'm a longtime listener, but I've been listening since 2018, which means you're like, dude, you're 13 years late to the party. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm a long-term listener since I've been in podcasting. So thanks for what you're doing here. And thank you for having me. All right. I appreciate it. This will probably get cut out, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Why do you listen to the show? Why would this get cut out? Sorry. Just, okay. I'm like, what, what? If anybody ever says I listen to your show, you're going to get two questions. So this is the first one is why do you listen? So I, I like to listen because I'm a student of podcasting. And so the name really drawed me to it. Uh, but your podcast is the only one that for some reason gives me, I'd say five to seven ideas per episode, just because of the way that you interview people. It's very unique. I feel like school of podcasting makes me, it makes me feel like I'm a full-time college student that's enrolled in like, five classes a single semester. So I just get all these ideas and I, I love that. And sometimes they're not directly related, but it's just something that you riff on and say, given your background, that really helps me a lot. All right. And what do you wish I would not do on the show anymore? Like, is there something like, oh, he's going to do that again? No, I actually, I really enjoy your humor. Um, so I, I, I think I usually don't listen. If there's things like that, that's when I usually stop listening to a show. But I, I've been listening for a long time. So I don't feel like there's really anything like that. I, I really enjoy it. Okay. Well, notice A, I'm, I'm now talking to the, the listener. Notice there, Dave did not say anything. There was a, a little baby mini awkward pause where I let him think about it. But I always say, ask that question and shut up. And then, you know, if they're going to think of one, they'll think of one. So there you go. I, I tell people that all the time. When you meet somebody who listens, you got to ask and find out, you know, so I can do more of that stuff that's working and less of the stuff that's not. And so one of the things, what a transition if you want to figure out your weak spot and your strength, you can go to podscore.io. So what is podscore.io? I realized that there was a problem in podcasting that you've realized as well. Pod fade, as we call it in the biz, right? It's just that people just don't make it. And it's really unfortunate. And when I first got into the space as like a software founder in it, you, you already hinted at Podmatch, I realized immediately we had a problem. And it's that 90% of podcast hosts were leaving the platform. And I, I told my co-founder, I'm like, we built something wrong, bro. Something's not working. And he's like, we'll start talking to them. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So I started talking to him. And there was, of course, the 1% that's like, your software sucks, right? But the 99% were saying, I'm just canceling all my subscriptions because I'm stopping my podcast. And as soon as I realized that, I, I started asking industry people, I probably asked you at one point, Dave, why is this? And then I came to find out it's like a 90% failure rate within the first year. And it might be a little bit less than that now because there's such good tools and education out there, but it's still really high. And so the idea for PodScore came from, 
can we help a podcaster know if they're on the right track to make it or not? Like, can we just help them do that? So we took a very data-driven approach. I interviewed too many podcasters, 1,600, 1,000 that stopped podcasting, 500 that are somewhere in the middle, and 100 that have like, quote unquote, made it as independent creators. So how do you interview 1,600 podcasters? Like, was this like in groups of 10 or? And it was one-on-one. It was too many. It's data redundancy. I only need to interview 100, but it was, uh, I did it over a three-year period of time. So it's not like I just did it overnight and wasn't hustling. So if you think about that, um, there was days, I can remember one day in particular, Dave, I, I, inter- I say I interviewed, it was just a quick Zoom call. It was 25 separate people. And that was my limit way past, right? But I just wanted to get this information. I wasn't smart enough to realize that, hey, you really, after 100 people, it just kind of gets repetitive. What'd you find from all those interviews? So I discovered that there's really 10 major determining factors of your success as a podcaster. There's 10 things that will cause you to to fail or that will cause you to succeed. And I, I kind of have those things listed out in order that are through it. We can definitely go through those as, if that's helpful or just at least some of them. Basically, I determined there's 10 separate things that really are going to help someone determine if they're going to be successful or not. Let's burn through all 10 if that's okay with you. Let's do it. We'll, we'll go through them real quick here. Uh, one caveat, Dave, that, that you know, it, it really all starts with your why and your purpose. And, and so I, I kind of just pull that one out of these 10 things because I, I think that we, it needs to be a given. Like there needs to be a reason that you do it in the first place. If you're just someone who's like, oh, I want to try something new. Podcasting sounds fun. You try it. Like that, your success or failure isn't really not trying to sound mean, but relevant necessarily because you're just trying, testing the waters, right? But if you get into it saying I have a purpose, that's really the main thing. But past that, there's 10 other things and we can kind of bounce back and forth. But to get in the very first one here, the, the number one thing, and this is kind of a no-brainer, is self-discipline, being persistent and committed to consistently releasing podcast episodes. That's the very first thing is having that self-discipline. Absolutely. Because when you can get a listener to make you part of their routine. It's kind of weird because I've had that and people have said, I'm taking a vacation. You're like, well, good. Cause you want them to not get burnt out. But then all of a sudden Friday rolls around and you're like, wait, where's, where's podcasting 2.0. I don't know what to do on Friday night. So number two, this one was actually the most shocking to me. I never factor this in, but it's self care. And maybe it's because just kind of giving you an insight to me, I'm very self disciplined to the fact that it's unhealthy and maybe, I don't know, we're not going to get a therapy session here. And that's my upbringing or something like that. Who knows, right? Uh, but I, I tend to be willing to work into the night and actually give up sleep, time with friends, family. But the number two contributing factor of success of podcasters, they have some self-care, which basically means maintaining a healthy balance between life and podcasting. And I, again, I, I was like, man, I never really thought of that. But it makes so much sense because you'll get burnt out. You can be the most self-disciplined on, person on the earth. And if you're just like, I'm so sick of this. I'm freaking done. Like we hit that point. But if you have that balance of self-care along with this self-discipline, so one and two kind of go hand in hand, that really does wonders for you as a podcaster long term. I always call this the the three-legged stool of podcasting. And that is, you. And it's exactly what you said. You got to have your attitude, you have to have your health, and then you have to have the support of those around you. Because if you have one of those, so let's say the the people around you start complaining that you're always in the cave and I can't believe you're podcasting again. That's going to grate on you if you're like, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Well, okay, eventually that could happen. That's an option. And then if your attitude is, Ugh, I don't want to do this anymore, though, all of those factor into exactly what you said. And then next thing you know, episode 11, you're like, all right, I'm done. Tapping out. Number three is uh, <laughs> knowing and displaying the specific niche value you provide to listeners uh, by intention- and intentionally serving them with that content. So in that context, in that content, you want to make sure that you have that niche or niche, however you say it, really figured out. And it's got to just be clear through everything you do. Perfect example of school of podcasting. There is no question what you're getting into when you listen to the show. If this was called Dave 2.0, I don't know what I'm going to get necessarily. And so a lot of people, they'll go a little bit more general because they're not really sure what they're doing, which Dave, you could speak that point more than, than I could. So I'll turn that over to you in a minute. But knowing this specific Again, it ties to that why, that purpose we talked about at the very beginning. But knowing that the niche, the value that you add really determines your success as a podcaster. Yeah. And sometimes we'll, we'll think, okay, well, I'm just going to do a podcast for women. And you're like, oh, I'm going to niche down. Now I'm going to do women that are widows. And you're like, there we go. Done. Okay. Well, there's a big difference between a widow that's 38 and lost their spouse in a car wreck and Mildred, who's 95 and lost Harold you know, in 99 or whatever. Like, so when you do that episode of like, Hey, today we're going to talk about getting back out in the dating scene. 
I'm not sure Mildred's going to be down for that. So you have to really know who your audience is. Absolutely. Now we're on number four. This is having a clear strategy and business model to grow and monetize the podcast. Now, this one immediately tells a lot of people say, well, Alex, my, I'm not trying to grow my podcast. I'm not trying to monetize it. Uh, but if you want to serve somebody, you want somebody to hear it. And I think a lot of people are terrified of this idea, like this strategy, having a plan for, for both those things in the long run. They're scared of it. So they just hide behind the, oh, but that's not really why I'm doing it. But the thing is, if you're losing $100 a month, eventually your spouse who doesn't care if you podcast or not is going to be like, listen, it's time to stop. Like We don't have the budget for this anymore. Or if you're not marketing and getting in front of people, then how is the person you're really trying to serve going to... How is he, how is he going to find them, right? And real quick here, I, I, I gave this disclaimer throughout it. I'm not talking about having millions of people listen or making millions of dollars throughout it. I'm just talking about getting it from the audience that needs it and also at least doing enough to break even. Uh, that to me is having that clear strategy and slash business model to grow and monetize the podcast. Yeah. In the end, I think most people, it's, I know a few that are like, I absolutely don't care about making any money. It's my hobby. It's my therapy. I get that. That That's, but many times, like you said, after a while, Todd Cochran always talks about how his wife gave him two years. It's like, all right, you're starting this thing. All right. It's got to start, you know, generating some income in two years because you are paying for it, not only in money, but also with your time. And so going back to your why that may tie into it, but, uh, you, you got to put some thought into it. All right. Number five. Number five is to have a specific content plan and structure that is coherent through every episode. Uh, that's, that's a big fancy way of basically saying, have a strategy. Don't just hit record and be like, hey, everybody, today I'm going to the zoo with my kids. Sorry, uh, I forgot to you know, post the episode yesterday. So uh, I'm just going to talk about the zoo. And it's like, what? <laughs> right? You can have different segments of the show. And some people do that really successfully. They'll do like three a week, which blows our mind how people do that. Um, but they basically will have like one that's an interview, one that's just them and one that's like maybe them doing a and a with their listenership or something like that. And that works. It's just having something for people to expect. The way I like to put this is imagine a TV show that you've loved. So for me, The Office is one I love. Imagine if I started watching one day and it like turned into a serious drama for that episode. I'd be like, what the heck am I watching? What is this? It does, it's not coherent. It's not what I... I didn't start watching this to cry. Like I started watching this to listen to like mindless humor that I'll remember for the rest of my life, right? So having this strategic content plan, one, helps you a lot, but two, also gives your listeners that sense of consistency. And that's what we're all looking for in life, I believe, right now. The thing that used to dr drive me nuts with TV shows is like, I don't know if the writers went on vacation or what, but you tune in, you're like, oh, great, new episode of this is on tonight, and you sit down to watch it, and it's one of those where they go, hey, remember the time when, and it's like a best of episode, and you're like, I've seen all these, I don't want to watch clips, like, ah, oh, somebody got lazy, so yeah, absolutely, set expectations, and then meet them, otherwise they're gonna, the third time they tune in, and they're not getting what they signed up for, they're gonna swipe left, and you're unsubscribed, so absolutely. Number six, this one's one of your superpowers, Dave, which I think about it now. Maybe all these are, but anyway, uh, this one's keeping your podcast organized through processes, systems, and SOPs, which stands for standard operating procedures. One of the reasons that people lose creativity or quit is because stress and overwhelm, which comes from a, a feeling of disorganization and they lose creativity and they feel like, oh, I just don't have anything else to give. It's because they're like, wait, do I edit these? Wait, do I post on Thursdays or Fridays? How do I do this? What's my tool for this? What's the link for that? How do I subscribe to this? What did I used to use for this? And I'm just basically sharing what a scattered mind sounds like, right? And the thing is, if you can just build out a system and process, you can be more creative and have less stress and anxiety along the way. A great example of this is when you're in the shower, you have really good ideas, right? Like you have really good ideas. And at the same time, you have no problem washing your hair, washing your face, washing your body. And it's because you've done it so many times, it's repetitive that you allow your mind to riff on other things. If you can do that with podcasts and you can make a better podcast and do it for much longer because stress and anxiety and, and overwhelm isn't part of it. There we go. And we're going to throw in a tangent because it's Dave Jackson. That's what I do. You have a third tool that helps people organize their episodes. Yeah, podcastsop.com. There you go. So speaking of SOPs, podcast SOP, that's a fun tool that, especially if you're working with a team, you can have people go in and like, here's my ideas, and now we're going to work on them and that whole nine yards. So if you are having a problem with staying focused or organizing your thoughts or where do I put these ideas when they come in out of the shower, podcast SOP. There you go. Next one. 
Number seven is having a team to delegate and outsource work to and using tools to simplify the process. So it's team, delegation, outsource, using tools. Dave, I really commend you on this. You've been in the game a long time of podcasting. The tools in 2005 were very different, I have to imagine. Am I right? It was horrendous. I, WordPress, I didn't even know about WordPress. I was making my website in a thing called Dreamweaver. And then I would use a software called Feed for All to make the feed, which I then had to FTP. Yeah, it was not pretty. So the thing is, a lot of people kind of get stuck in their ways. I'm not going to call any podcasters out, but there's some that started in 2000. 15, 14, they're still using that same tool set. And it's like, man, you're taking the stairs, but we invented an elevator. Like you can take the elevator now, right? Like that, that's an option. And, and some things in life you have to do the difficult way. So I'm not trying to say take shortcuts where you can. I'm just saying, we've got to think about how do I delegate, outsource, use tools to simplify this process. And I'm not saying be the early adopter of all things, but Dave, in recent episodes, you've been hinting at using new tools to implement video, to be able to, to streamline the editing process for it. And you've done a, an incredible job at it. And I think that if we can all focus on that just enough to say, where's my pain point? Is there something that can solve that or make that faster on a continuous basis? You make podcasting less overwhelming. And the thing is, if you can replace the things that you like the least, and I say replace, it means delegate, find someone to do it or just stop altogether, right? You can just focus on things you enjoy. A great example is somebody I just, who went through PodScore, has been toying with canceling their podcast. They're so tired of it. Hmm. They're only tired of one thing, editing. They hired a virtual assistant and they say they've never had more fire and passion for their podcast and they're having more fun than they ever had before. By making that one adjustment, they delegated something. That's it. You know, what makes you burn out when you get into that mindset of, uh, you know, and then the other thing is, this is just from my background as somebody that's always been in education. If you're not learning, you're going backwards. And so I have to keep up and that can be really overwhelming. And there I've kind of in that spot right now where they're just every time I turn around, I'm like, I got to learn more about chat GBT. And I, I still need to really embrace all of what cap show does and this and that. And there just comes a time when there's only so many hours in the day. And I'm like, okay, well, which one is easier and which one can impact my audience? A lot of times is how I decide stuff. You do what you can and keep on moving and, you know, you can't keep up with everybody. Do you and and keep your sanity. So Capture just told me that uh, I, I was telling them how I use it. I was talking to a group of people and Deidre, the founder, was yeah. on and she goes, ooh, Alex, don't use it that way. And I was like, well, you know what? Help me figure out how to use it better. Like, it's just all a process. I'm not telling anyone like you. We're not telling them to be perfect. Like just right. get 1% better every day with this stuff. That's it. Absolutely. Number eight. Number eight. Seeking out listener feedback through individual conversations with them. Now, th this all these are in order, keep in mind, of what really has the biggest impact. This is the only one I personally didn't agree with, but the, the data is conclusive. But I think that you can just figure out what you're doing a lot faster if you actually talk to listeners. A, a great example is I'll give you my show. My show that was kind of like my breakout show, if you will, was called Creating a Brand. It was one where I was interviewing entrepreneurs. Very unique idea, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I, it was just general entrepreneurship. And I started talking to my listeners they all wanted to be podcasters. They mm -hmm. wanted to be an entrepreneur, but they wanted to like use that as their marketing vehicle, their kind of way to do things. And I was shocked when I learned that. And it took me six months to get on a call with them. I made that adjustment and my show absolutely took off. And the thing is, if I never would have talked to them, I could have been working really hard to find the best tip for making your first million. But that's not what my listeners wanted. If you can actually talk to your listeners, you can refocus on the things that will actually move the needle forward with your podcast. So again, this being number eight, to me, I was like, man, this seems like much higher on the list, but uh, the data was conclusive. So I digress on that point. But talking to your listeners is one of the most valuable things you can do as a podcaster. My favorite mistake, I was going to send out an invite to schedule Zoom meetings with like 10 people from my email list, and I accidentally sent it to the whole list. And so for the next two weeks, I was doing these half hour meetings, and it was the best mistake I've ever made because I did what I did today, where I was like, why do you like it? What do you wish I didn't do? What do you want to hear about in the future kind of thing? And when you can tell me the eye color of your audience, you're doing something right because that's the the best way to figure out what's going on. So excellent. That's a Dave Jackson quotable right there. That's good. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine is to continuously improve your podcasting craft. So become a better speaker, listener, and interviewer if you have an interview-based podcast. What this really means is just be good at it. it you know, one of the things I was talking to uh, somebody with, Dave, when I found very interesting is... Some of the big shows out there, I, and I'm not trying to be rude or mean by saying this, but I've listened to some of them and they're not very good podcasts. 
And mm. again, not trying to be rude or mean, but like, I'm like, listen, I'm like, how is this a top 500 show in the world? Like, I, I don't understand. I figured it out. They're excellent marketers, mm. but they're not excellent podcasters. So here's the thing. They might be able to get a million new people to come check out their podcast every single month. But I have to imagine 900,000 of them are leaving after that first episode, but they're just good at keeping the pipeline going. If you want to actually make it as a podcaster, make your show so good that one, everybody feels compelled to share it, not because you asked, but because it's that good. And two, no one ever wants to stop listening because they just, they know they're missing out if they don't hear you. If you can improve your craft as a podcaster, one, you'll get more confident, you'll enjoy it more, but also you'll get some listeners that become true loyal fans along the way. Absolutely. And that's where going back to what we mentioned before, if you're like, I'm just not good at marketing, like marketing is not my, it's, I understand it. I used to teach classes on it, but I have too much of a customer service background to where the customer is always right to, I instantly feel pushy. And so that's where I've identified my weakness, which again, we'll talk about here with PodScore. And then you can um, say, okay, I either need to farm this out because it's not my strength and it's, it's, you know, rubbing me the wrong way. Or B, I need to go buy a book or listen to a podcast and, and get better at this. So, all right. Last but not least, number 10. This one you hinted at earlier when you talked about the three things that, that you really preach and you talk about a lot. And this one's enlisting accountability and being active in community and collaboration with other podcasters. Listen, when you're going the course alone, it's real easy to stop. Uh, I, I think we all know that, right? If you have accountability in your life, then you're going to go a lot longer, a lot further, a lot faster, right? And a great example is I love to play soccer. And when we're doing like drills and training, one of the things I love is lining up the whole team and having them just do these basically suicides back and forth, right? And when one person stops, this is like a really interesting tactic a coach did, then everyone, ha then you're all done. No one wants to be the person to stop because you're all running together, right? So mm. everyone goes, I mean, probably twice as far as they think they can, right? Because you're like, I don't want to be the one to stop the whole team, Right. And so I'm not telling you to go run suicides at a track with other podcasters. What I'm saying is find a way to get in it into a community where you feel inspired, where you can share your wins, your losses. Just have people in your corner say, you know what, Dave, you're doing a great job. Keep it up, man. Keep on going. Uh, having that is just so, so valuable. And I find the podcasters that are out there by themselves. They're like that gazelle that's wandered off that gets eaten by a lion, right? Just don't let that be you. Stay with the community and with the tribe. And that's really where... The community, I know there's a community for, for Podmatch. And when you go to things like Podcast Movement and Podfest and things like that, I know in the early years, it was me, Corey Finnerin from uh, a show about Chicago baseball, Nick Suberling and John Buchanan. And we, we called it Podcast Therapy. Uh, Emily Prokop was in there too. And we would just get together. And at times it was just, I need to commiserate and just like, this isn't working. I'm trying this and the stupid art thing and blah, blah. And it's just nice sometimes just to blow off steam with somebody that goes, I totally get that. By the way, here's the fix. Here's the way to fix that. And it just puts a little gas in your tank when you realize, oh, I'm not the only one that feels this way or is thinking this way or didn't work for me either and things like that. So I absolutely have some community around you. So when people go through pod score, what are some basic questions that they need to answer? There's quite a few questions to make this truly valuable. Right. And so right right now, we, I, I think we're, I kind of overestimated a little bit just to set the expectation. Rather, you finish it quicker than I say, not not take longer. Right. It takes about 20, 28 minutes to do it. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a quote, a Dave Jackson quote. Recently, I heard you talk about how getting on the treadmill can be really tough, but you never regret getting off of it. Right. Yeah. Like once you've actually done the workout. And I really think that pod score is, I think that's a great way to say it, Dave. And I think that pod score is really like that. Out of the 7,000 people that have been through it in the last month alone, no one has said this was a total waste of my time, right? So yes, it might take up to 28 minutes, but the thing is the information to get is extremely valuable along the way. Very nice. Yeah, because it's a kind of a cool little mirror that you hold up and you go, you'll either go, really, that's my weakness? And you go, eh, maybe it is. Okay, I get it now. And that'll give you some idea. I guess you end up with a, a podcaster type is what you end up with, right? Yeah. Yeah. So th there's, we determined there's 12 podcaster personality types, yeah. which really is kind of like the, uh, it entices you to take it, right? Cause we will tell you what type of podcaster personality type you are. And it's not like taking a Disney princess quiz. It's not going to be like, <laughs> and you're Ariel, right? Like it's, it's not going to do that. It'll actually give you the data driven approach to what you are and then give you some ideas to improve based off those 10 things we talked about. But interestingly enough, the most common one we're seeing is actually self care. Mm. Uh, at first, I was like, how is that possible? Because like, I, that's the opposite of mine, the complete opposite of mine. Yeah. Uh, but I realized that the type of people to actually invest in themselves 
and take a quiz like this that's going to help them are typically the people that are interested in self-care. It's like the old statistic. The people that get self-help books are typically the ones that need the least help because they just see the need for it on an ongoing basis. So that's actually the most common one. Any other takeaways from looking at the data at this point? Yeah, I was actually shocked at how how few people, the lowest one was actually accountability and community. How few podcasters are actually into that. And weirdly enough, so many people have emailed in being like, I didn't know there was podcasting conferences. I didn't know there was podcasts about podcasting. That type of like absolutely blows my mind. I I guess if you just get into it, you don't really think about the ecosystem that makes up podcasting. And and no offense to the hosting providers, but I, I know you're with one that does a good job of this, but most of them don't really do a good job sharing anything past just what they have. They're like, stay with us. This is all you need, right? But they don't really give you any way to do anything with them. So I I digress on that point. But that really blew my mind how few people have any form of community or accountability in podcasting. And I always see where a lot of podcasters label themselves as introverts. So I could kind of see where maybe that's part of it. Like, oh, community, I got to hang around with people. I'm like, yeah, but you can (laughs) hang around with people. I mean, it could be as simple as a Facebook group or whatever. You know, you can still be in your chair. You You don't actually have to go touch anybody. So, but it does, it helps. I'm here to tell you. And especially if it's your your own audience, that's even better because now you've, you're getting ideas straight from the people you're trying to serve. We'll continue on in a second with my conversation with Alex, because you're probably thinking, hey, this sounds pretty cool, but how much is this pod score thing? And Dave, you mentioned Podmatch 2.0. Yeah, that's coming up in just a bit right after this. And now back to my conversation with Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much does it cost to go through PodScore? It, completely free. The entire thing, like there, there's no upsell at the end. There's not like some, by the way, surprise, you know, like right. uh, it, it's nothing like that. And we did that intentionally. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Dave, because this was like, I was in a, a mastermind doing a hot seat and I asked people like, should I charge for this? And I was like really struggling with it because you, you want the law of buy-in to take effect, right? Like people don't value it. They don't pay for it. But mm-hmm. I'm like, but they're doing a quiz. And out of the 20 people there, every single one said, you'd be an idiot not to charge. And I end up going against what they all said. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take a bet on these people, the ones that go through this, that they're going to be serious about their success. And so because that everything is free, there's no like gateway for anything like that. And the whole idea was just, can this actually help and serve the industry knowing that most people don't have a big budget to do this? I do recommend some paid tools throughout it. Uh, you mentioned Cap Show earlier. I, I recommend Cap Show throughout it, right? Like, and yes, you have to go pay for that. But I've made sure that nothing on it was even an affiliate link because at the end of the day, I don't want it to ever become something that self-serves Alex. I really want to be some, this to be something that serves the industry at large. Well, you have my permission. In case you've ever wondered, I, that would have been an affiliate link, but I get it. People are going to go, well, that's why he's doing it. He's, we thought he was a nice guy. He's just trying to pitch stuff. Yeah, I get that. So excellent. I want to switch gears a little bit. Again, you can find that at podscore.io. I use Podmatch. I love Podmatch. I love the gamification when I get notifications. Hey, we have new matches for you. I'm like, ooh, who is it? Uh, If you're new, Podmatch is a great place for podcasters to find. uh, If you're a podcaster, you can find guests. And if you want to be a guest, you can find podcasters. So it's kind of like a dating site for, for podcasters. And I just think it's an awesome tool. And so what's, what's new and exciting at Podmatch that you're talking about? Yeah. Fun fact. You mentioned it kind of being like a dating app. I had a friend who she does not understand podcasting at all. She asked, like, this was a year after I launched it. She's like, so have any podcasters gotten married because of this yet? I was like, no, that'd be really weird. She goes, oh, is it more like a hookup thing? I was like, dude, it's it's putting people together for interviews. What do you think it is? She's like, oh, I thought it was actually a dating app specifically for podcasters. She goes, she she goes, you know, like farmers only. I was like, oh my gosh. If anyone's listening to this, (laughs) there might be an idea there. We're not going to do it. If you want to take that one. Um, But, uh, yeah. So the whole idea is just, can we make that connection happen faster? And we launched on June 15th, 2020. And since then, we've just been working on doing what's best for the members that are using it. So we're always asking. And we just finally launched after it was nine months of work. We launched uh, what's called, we're just calling it Podmatch 2.0 because that big of an update, which is just basically creating a new foundation, some really robust additional features and just polishing around it. But the best thing is that now, but the way this software is designed now is so quick to be able to continue to innovate on the roadmap. And our members, the ones that decide what we do next. But we, since launching it, we launched it a week ago at the time of recording this. And we've already pushed two new updates based off of things that members said they wanted. Previously, it took us a lot longer than that. And that's the really exciting thing is we're going to be able to continue to do more and more things. The other thing along with it is 
we actually uh, we we uh, do a profit share with podcasters. So if you're a host and you you interview somebody from the platform, you earn we just call it a commission along the way just for doing that interview because it's our profit share. We were able to actually bump that up a little bit more, which we typically don't announce because sometimes it brings the wrong people to the platform. Um, yeah. But uh, but that's important to us is putting the money back in the hands of the pocket of the creator because they're the ones doing the work. Well, and and speaking of maybe having the we'll put in quotation marks here wrong people on the platform. I've heard a rumor that you actually have removed people from the platform. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I, that sounds so mean to say I'm like that executioner, but we, we're very, we have like a report abuse button. We're very careful to find out why someone is, is why they're getting reported. If that keeps on happening and we, we do hear things, it's just kind of like a shark coming in and we just are very quick to remove that person. We typically refund them their money as well. So they can't be like, you ripped me off. Right. Mm-hmm. We just give it all back and say, sorry, this platform just isn't for you. We do things like that. Or if people aren't active, because like we said, or like you and I were talking about earlier, a lot of podcasters just don't make it. My least favorite thing is if you're a guest and you want to be on a podcast and you message a podcast and you get radio silence because they stopped the show eight months ago, we make sure to remove those podcasts from the platform because we want it to be a place of activity. We want it to feel more like a community, more like you're going to, to hear back. And sure, some podcasts, like myself included, takes about two weeks to respond to a message, but that's just kind of where I'm at. But you are going to hear back from me. When I went to podcast movement, I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to kind of manage my pod match. So you can go into your profile, I believe, and hide yourself. So that way you don't come up in the searches and things like that. Because I was kind of like, I don't want to get a bad grade because I didn't email somebody. Uh, and that's the one thing I did see where when you are done with an interview, you can review your your interviewee or your podcast or whichever way you're, you're working that uh, angle. But you also have a box and it's like, hey, if you'd like to report some feedback, this is only going to be seen by Alex and the team. It's not going to go to whoever you were working with. And I thought that was uh, pretty cool because there are those times when you're like, oh, it was it was a great interview. Thanks so much. But behind the scenes, you're like, Ugh, there's going to be a lot of editing with this one. That, That's I, an introvert thing right there, by the way, right? Because yeah. like, the introvert's still going to leave you five stars and be like, it was great. When in reality, they're like cringing. They're like, this is a one star, but I can't bring myself to say that, right? Yeah. It gives you the permission to be able to tell us the truth. And we handle it, if you will. So Yeah, because that's I, I was in that boat. I was like, even giving a person four stars, I was like, oh, they're just going to go out on Twitter and social. Go, Dave Jackson's just a dirty old, you know, it's like, all right. So, but I love the, I love the idea and I'm glad to see that it's working. And it sounds like, uh, what a novel idea. Wait, you listen to your customers and then give them what they want. What a concept. I mean, it's it's groundbreaking. It kind of is weirdly <laughs> enough in this world. But uh, but yeah, that's exactly what we do. That's the whole plan. I realize you just launched 2.0. 2.1, anything that you're like, oh, maybe six months from now, we'd like to add this or we're not thinking that far ahead. We just got done with 2.0. Yeah. If uh, if I have permission to share something I've never shared, um, no. if that's okay on this podcast. That's, that's, uh, that's gold in my world. There you go. Right. We're realizing we, we, I love podcast SOP.com. We already talked about it, right? I realize there's a lot of value if we bring it into Podmatch specifically mm. and just make another option there. One of the things I like least as a podcast guest is when a host says, Can you fill out this form? And all it wants is my name, my social media links. I'm like, I already have a Podmatch profile. Can't you copy paste it? Right. Cause I know you're just copy pasting it down the line somewhere anyway. Right. right? And I, I don't mean to be rude by saying that. I always end up doing it, but my head, I'm always like, Man, this just feels very, repetitive. I know that they're just copy pasting the same thing later. So we were thinking like, what if podcast SOP was just inside of Podmatch and automatically pulled all the questions you had anyway from the profile because it's already there. So the guest has a better experience and you as the host aren't getting typos or the, the, the guest who doesn't want to fill it out is just like, check this, right? It can actually just pull it across. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're talking about bringing into it. And that won't be like an, it won't be an extra charge or anything like that. That's just something we're like, you know what, this might serve people really well. No one has specifically asked for it, but I think that it might be a more seamless experience, even just based off my own podcast guesting. There you go. Well, nobody asked for an iPod and they seem to be pretty happy when it came out. So, and that the truth. Sometimes the customer doesn't know what they want yet. So you go, looky, look what I made. And they're like, ooh, that's cool. Well, Alex Sanfilippo, did I say your last name right? You said it perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Cause I, I chickened out at the beginning. I just said Alex from, from Podscore because I'm like, oh, I'm probably going to butcher his last name, but. Thank you so much. I was much. really about Jackson, by the way. I was, I was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just realized I was on your show. That's why I thought you were on my show. That's it. There we go. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I've now. Which, re- by the way, if anyone wants to check that out, podpros.com slash 225. 
I mean, you're a great interviewer, Dave, but also being interviewed, you're a great interviewee. So podpros.com slash 225. You want to check out Dave, the legend. There you go. And I'll have links to that out in the show notes. So, man, thanks so much for your time. It's always great hanging with you. And uh, I look forward to bumping in to you at, uh, I'm sure, many conferences in the future. So uh, thanks so much for coming on. For sure, Dave. Thanks again. It was an honor. And I will put links to everything out at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 895, including a link to Alex's podcast, which is called Podcasting Made Simple, which is the one I appeared on. I thought it was interesting that the the top two, the first one was self-care and then self-discipline. And what always worries me, especially when it comes to self-care, is the fact that there is a certain subset of entrepreneurs that have that hustle mentality. You know, the one like, hey, if you're getting more than four hours sleep, you're a slacker. And it's ridiculous. And it's just push, 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 go, go, go. If you want it, you got to hustle. Then, And if you're not getting the right results, then you're not doing it right. And and, and that may be true, but the answer isn't drink more coffee and push yourself and ignore your family and things like that, which is, I'm glad I brought up the uh, the three-legged stool of podcasting. I'll put a link to an episode where I, I dive into that. And one of the things about, since we're talking about podcasting success, I do wish I could hear, it might've been Jordan Harbinger was on a show talking about his success. He gets six figure downloads, if not more. It's an amazing show. And he said, most of the people that are having large success start off for fun. They do. And because it was fun for them, they didn't obsess over making money. And because when you first go to make money, you're not in most cases, but in some, but nonetheless, it's another thing to distract you from delivering absolute value to your audience because the first step of making money is to grow your audience. And like Alex said, that might mean setting up some Zoom calls just to talk to people and, hey, what would you like on the show? You heard me do it today. But I really... Every time I talk to Alex when I was on his show, and I'll have a link to that out again at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 895, and I talk to him at events, there are people out there, and I'm not going to name names, that are selling you a podcast launch for thousands of dollars with uh, three easy payments, and they're kind of, in some cases, selling you a lot of hope because just because you launched like nobody can guarantee you success unless there's some shenanigans. And if you go, Dave, why do you say that? I go case in point, American idol, right? You're in front of millions of people, but go ahead. Tell me season six winner of American idol. Now that person is probably still making a living. I hope at music in some way, but there's, there's no guarantees is what I'm saying. We are in the entertainment business, even though we might, primarily be educating people or whatever it is. And if you want to be successful, there are best practices. And that's what PodScore can help you identify along with, he mentioned tools. So definitely check out PodMatch. And again, I'll have links to all this stuff, but realize that you have to take care of yourself because if you burn yourself out, you take your show down with you. And that is something to mourn. You know, I always say how smart the podcasting community is at the School of Podcasting, but I'm not kidding. Uh, We just had Dr. Brenda Moreau just launched Connection Therapy at ConnectionTherapy.com. Dr. Brad Miller just launched Cancer and Comedy. Find that at cancerandcomedy.com. And Dr. Craig Van Slyke has been doing Live Well and Flourish at livewellandflourish.com for quite some time. And this goes in addition to awesome people like David Hooper and Steve Stewart. And I could go on. I shouldn't name names because everybody's going to go, why didn't you mention me? But I'm here to tell you, yes, you get courses. And yes, you get unlimited one-on-one consulting with me. 
but you also get the awesome School of Podcasting community. In fact, last Saturday, Chris Stone from castahead.net, who is a great video guy, live producer, as well as just overall podcast uh, consultant and coach as well, he did a demonstration of Descript for us. So you're missing out if you're not a member of the School of Podcasting. And remember, you can join absolutely worry-free. If you join within 30 days, you're like, yeah, it's not for me. I will refund your money, no questions asked. Well, that's really not true. I will ask, like, what would you have liked to have seen? Because, you know, that whole teacher part of me, I always want to make things better. But I will refund your money, and I'm not going to hold it and, you know, make you – it's not going to be like, be like trying to uh, leave AOL, if you guys remember that, or if you've ever had to leave Sirius XM, man, they ask you 38 million questions before they finally give you – a refund. I'm not like that, but I do look forward to seeing you on the inside. Thanks so much for listening. Until next week, take care. God bless. Class is dismissed. And remember, don't be boring. All right, number seven. Number six. Six. I'm awful at this. <laughs> number four. Or number we're on three. three. I just want we're to jump three. ahead. I'm so excited. <laughs> I want to jump ahead. Um, <laughs> yes. I didn't, want to, a, I didn't want to guess because I was going to get it wrong again. You're like, I don't know. Is it number four, eight, ten, whatever? Um, <laughs>